Good afternoon. How the public are program part one. So what is reaching people? Reaching people was a project that started a couple of years ago in response to what we were seeing in the in the world and the problems we were facing. And what reaching people is trying to do is to show people how they can have good, honest, open conversations. Information will freely flow both ways. How that we can message effectively if we have an important message to get out there. And really to understand behavior and how we are influenced. This is very important for a number of reasons, but one, to protect ourselves from undue influence, but then to understand what's driving other people's behavior it can be very, very useful. So today's presentation is really going to look at a couple of things. Firstly, we're going to look at what is conditioning. And conditioning is really very, very important, and you're going to see why that is the case. There really is two forms of conditioning. We're going to take a look at those as classical and operant. And then we're going to look at how they were used to create the only way out scenario. This is the very common thing when you're talking to many members of the public. They will say, oh, we had to do that. It was the only way out. It's not an accident. It's a very well orchestrated marketing situation. And we're going to take a look at how it played into that scenario. So a lot of people talk about brainwashing and they say that people are brainwashed. And I don't really uh warm to the term too much because i think brainwashing for me is really to create a clear slate in the mind which might not be a bad idea in some situations and then you get a chance to do your own conditioning but really the definition of brainwash is the process of personalizing someone into adopting radically different beliefs by using systematic and often forcible means i think that this can be very problematic talking about it certainly if you tell someone they've been brainwashed, you're never going to get a good response. Um, I think what we want to look at more is what's conditioning, because conditioning is very much a normal thing that happens. It's a form of learning. And there's two main types, which is the classical, which is linking a stimulus to a response. And that was really um, Pavlov that showed that in various studies, the Pavlov, which we will take a look at, but he would effectively feed dogs and then, you know, when they, sh they saw the food, they would salivate. Then what he would do just before feeding them, he would ring a bell. And it got to the point where the dog realized that every time the bell rang, that there would be food. So then the dog would salivate when the bell rang. Now, I know any of those of you that have dogs, I only have to rustle a packet of treats and my dog will be there. She's learned that what that rustle means a treat. Operating conditioning is different. It is learning in such a way to respond to rewards and punishments. So these two ways of conditioning, once you understand what they are and how they work, you'll see a lot of how the propaganda, advertising and marketing works. And uh, it's very eye-opening when we see that. So let's first take a look at classical conditioning. Now, an initial unconditioned response would be that Joe sees ice cream and he salivates. That's just inbuilt. There's nothing conditioned about it. It's just a normal, deep uh, thing that when we see food, we salivate. Obviously, Joe will learn different foods and salivates, and other people would see ice cream and not salivate or would not feel good about it at all. But let's say Joe likes ice creams, and all he needs to do is see an ice cream, and he will salivate. Now, when we get a conditioned response to that, it's when Joe sees the ice cream van and he hears the music. And that gets attached to the ice cream, creates the salivation. That's now a learned response. That's a conditioned response. And the ice cream band is one of the classical, you know, almost similar to Pavlov's dogs, that when children hear this, straight away, it triggers the picture of the ice cream and the desire to want an ice cream. Now, what Pavlov showed via this, and you'll see so many of classical conditioning, so much of marketing is classical conditioning, and it really was four stages. So before conditioning, the dog would see the food. So on the top left-hand side, the dog would see the food and would salivate. Okay, that's an unconditioned stimulus and an unconditioned response. Then what happened was that he would click a tuning fork or a bell, and there's no, initially, no stimulus with the fork. But if he would do it at the same time as feeding the dog, these two things get wired together. So then the dog thinks bell equals food to the point where it happens in the fourth when when it's been conditioned, all they have to do is ring the fork and get the salivation or you know ring the bell or turn the fork. 
And that's what happens with the learning process. So what happens with in life that when we associate two things together, we generally now through advertising, people will see, you know, all of this, you can see it's about creating a link between an emotion or a feeling or a response and the product. That's what all of this classical condition marketing is. I mean, some people will look at this and think, oh, I can clean my engine or my car. And that would be a different response. But then what you've got is that these sort of pictures are what creates this response. Yeah, so this was when we look at how a lot of this would have been used during the pandemic to create fear associated to COVID. You see how that's the key and you do that via various things, but that was one of the really powerful ones. So class classical condition is a stimulus that is paired with a biological stimulus to form a learned response. So this really neurons that fire together, wire together. So we're going to look at a picture and I would guess that everyone down here would have a slight feeling of disgust when you see this picture. That's a learned response. You've learned to feel that response. Whereas alternatively, if you saw this picture, you would have a nice fluffy feeling. So what we're doing is we're getting a response to things. So a lot of the media and the marketing is to create an association between two things. So that's um, classical conditioning. Then if we look at operant conditioning, this is really rewards and punishments. So when we look at the standard reinforcement and punishment, we see that there's both positive and negative. So to reinforce, you can positively add something, whether it be a gold star or well done, etc., to reinforce a positive behavior, or you can remove something unpleasant to so you could say someone you've done well today no homework so that's a positive reinforcement for the per, for the person to behave well as punishment you can add in something unpleasant or you can remove something that is pleasant so as a punishment so you can say right you're having no gain this evening because you've done bad so pretty much this this rewards and punishments is what drives so much about the learned conditioning so if we look at positive reinforcement, what Skinner did, now this is Skinner's box. Now Skinner was responsible for a lot of behaviorism. Now they put a rat in a box and what the rat learned that if it pressed the button, it got a reward, it got a piece of food. So then what it would do, it would constantly press the button to get the food. So this was really positive reinforcement. And what they, and what you'll see is, that a lot of this was actually used in a lot of the marketing, you know, get a free kebab, a free donut. So that was a use of positive reinforcement. Also, when people changed their profile picture and they had people saying, well done, congratulations, all these things, that's again a positive reinforcement. Now, positive reinforcements are really carrots and sticks and they're very, very powerful, particularly social um reinforcement so if people say well done or they scowl at you this can be very effective in terms of getting people to change their behaviors so then if we look at negative reinforcement what we see is that skinner did a similar thing where what he did was he would put a little electrical shock in the thing and then the mouse learned that if it pressed the button the electric shock disappeared so in fact it was a you know removal of negative reinforcement and of course we can see that there was many instances of this within the COVID narrative. No jab, no job was one of them. So one moment. Sorry about that. I was interrupted. All right. So no jab, no job was literally an instance of negative reinforcement. So what you had was, you know, lots of positive reinforcements moving people towards what those pushing the narrative wanted them to do. And then lots of sticks, negative reinforcement, moving them away from not what, you know, what they didn't want them to do. So hopefully now we can see that there's really two types, which was the classical conditioning, which is to link two things together, COVID bad, medical procedure good, and then we had this then carrot and stick moving people away from one thing and then towards another. 
So we're going to ask a few questions and then we're going to look at putting it all together. So people dropping dead in the street in relation to conditioning may have been A, operant conditioning, B, classical conditioning, or C, neither. We see that that was actually a form of classical conditioning. So it's linking the virus equals dangerous. So that's a form of classical conditioning. Then if we look at linking mask safety as a form of, is it A, B, or C? You'll see again, this is classical, classical conditioning. It's linking one thing equals to another, okay? Then if we look at question three, finding people for not wearing a mask was operant conditioning, classical conditioning, neither. You now see that this is operant conditioning. So this is rewards and punishments. And then if we look at four, taking away people's job for not getting medical procedure is a form of which operant conditioning? Is it positive reinforcement? Is it negative reinforcement? Or, oh, that should say neutral. But in fact, you'll see it is, uh, sorry, neutral reinforcement or negative. So see, it's actually negative reinforcement. So it's basically saying, if you don't do what we want you to do, you're going to lose something. Okay, and you see that's very, very powerful, especially something like a job. So if we look to put all this together, what we see is that this slide can really give us a lot of information. So what they've done is over here is the drive. So they've linked the virus to being very dangerous. So this is what they don't want people to be exposed to or to be scared of. This then creates forces to move people down this pathway to get, obviously we're using unicorn as a code word here, but you see this now is, this is bad, this is good. And that's classical conditioning. You see that? This is bad, this is good. So Joe, if he doesn't think about it too much, these forces will push him away from this and towards this. And of course, there is also this option on many of the earlier ones, but you see what happened was, that that then had negative reinforcement to block that pathway. Don't go down that. So it's literally carrot and stick. Go down this one, not that one. And this is where if Joe does have two options, he's then in a dilemma. But that's why the propaganda's driven completely to stop Joe going down this one and to make him go down that one. And you're seeing that all the carrot and sticks and the nudges literally to make this pathway like uh, Teflon to make it very smooth and easy and this pathway to be like sludge to make it almost impossible. So on a lot of the other videos we show you all the other elements here but today we're really looking at that base programming which is really virus equals bad, unicorn equals good which when you look in you know animal farm two legs bad, four legs good it's that really base level of programming. So hopefully that makes sense now from that real base thing when we're looking at, you know, the two types of conditioning. So we're looking at in summary, what is conditioning? Conditioning is really learning. It's learning that one thing equals another or what one thing is. And then the two forms were the classical, which was learning that, you know, in the propaganda, virus equals, you know, certain death was like a lot of people would think. And the operating conditioning is really carrot and stick, rewards and punishments. You do as we tell you to do, you get rewards. You don't do as we tell you to do, you get punishments. And those punishments came in so many different forms to the point where you couldn't even shop, travel, all these things. And you can see at this base level, that's really what so much of the propaganda was, was based around. And how were they used to create the only way out scenario? Well, it was to create one pathway to make all other pathways very, very difficult and to make that one pathway as smooth as possible. And you would have seen that so many people would have actually used that term, the only way out. It was such a commonly used term, it was kind of incredible. And I don't think people that use that term were really aware that that weren't their own words. That was really, you know, advertising, marketing, from what I can see. So hopefully now that gives us really the two of the really base uh, elements when it comes to 
you know, programming people effectively, you know, uh, if we're not programming ourselves, then there's a good chance that somebody else will be doing so. Uh, hopefully that's uh, quite useful. What we're trying to do now is get in a few of these concepts very clear and, and just build on them one by one. And then you can really begin to understand how so much of the propaganda works and, and really why it's so effective. Um, so if you would like to donate or support the project, you can do so here. Um, we're also now going to be running the workshops again on communication and also ones on behavior messaging. And uh, coaching is also now available. Uh, you can email me at david at reachingpeople.net and I will open it up for Q&A.